Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions, like what is the best FU watch out there? And out of these three very big brands from the 90s, what offers the best value on the market right now? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my H Moser Pioneer Green Dial on an orange Moser strap. You guys know I love this watch. Haven't worn it in a little bit, but it's really hot here in Miami. So on the rubber watches I'm moving on to. And also guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Some very cool watches came in recently, including this GP Laureato, the new version with the green dial, the most sought after one on the market. And of course, since it's Delray Watch, the least expensive one in the country. We also got in an H Moser Endeavor Vanta Black. Now this watch is super special. I'm this close to keeping it for myself. You guys know I love Moser. I own an Endeavor, but this has the Vanta Black dial. Now using some like carbon fiber nanotubes, I'm not sure of the technology, Vanta Black is the blackest color produced in the world. The dial just looks black in pictures, but in real life, it's something very special. It's like where color goes to die. Very, very cool. And of course, least expensive one in the country. We also got in a JLC Reverso Tribute Chronograph. This is the new Reverso Chronograph that recently came out. Very high-end watch, a very complicated Reverso. The front looks very, you know, Reverso-esque. The back is a skeletonized chronograph, one of the best recent memory reversos ever produced. And of course, we have one in stock. All that and way more at DelrayWatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Anyway, guys, you know the spiel. These are the questions you ask me on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. A few times a month, a Q&A picture pops up. When you see that picture, feel free to ask your questions. When I get enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. And in no particular order, we start with BGM 1082. And he says, do you fear we are headed into a recession and watch sales will drop even more? Great question. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not an economist uh, at all, but I will say I don't think there's a recession coming. Um, you know, the Fed is said to cut interest rates, which not particularly correlated to the watch industry, um, is good for the economy as a whole. We've, you know, unemployment is up a little bit, about 4.3%, but we expected that. Um, I think the media has a lot of fear mongering in it. I think right now, especially in this particular political climate, people want you to think things are worse than they are. Um, but no, sales are actually still strong. Yes, prices are coming down, but that's from the bubble of COVID. And I'll say this again, I think this is just, just a correction, not a crash. But as much as I'm not an economist, I really, you know, don't think we're on, we're looming on the border of a recession. Things are strong, sales are strong, but you know, you never know. Maybe it's wishful thinking on my part. Justin Allure. Which of these underappreciated brands, which were so big in the 90s, offer the best value in the secondary market? Breguet, Blancpain, or Frank Mueller? So we're going to remove Frank Mueller right off the bat because they never offered good value, even though right now Frank Mueller is dirt cheap, but still not a particularly special watch. I love Breguet. Uh, Breguet is my favorite out of these three brands, but not necessarily the one that offers the best bang for buck. I'm going to go with non-50 Fathoms Blancpain particularly the VRA and dress watches. Their 90s pieces, which are super high-end, um, Frederic Piguet movements, gold cases, enamel dials in some, of them, in some of them, can be had for nothing. I mean, I, I'm i selling gold blanc pond for under 5,000 and even under 4,000 in some respects, and it's a very classic looking dress watch. Watches which were 15 to $20,000 now can be had for three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. I mean, we're talking 20 cents on the dollar uh, for a watch that's extremely well made. I think when it comes to Blancpain, people focus on the 50 Fathoms. 
that's their hype watch, so to speak. But the dress watches are massively underappreciated and undervalued, which is a good thing for collectors. Camille Mrue says, Hey Fed, what are your thoughts on the Zenith Elite Classic? Is it a good choice for a dress watch? The Zenith Elite Classic is a fantastic choice for a, a dress watch. People, once again, kind of like Blanc Pan and Zenith, they focus on the El Primero. The Elite Classic is another in house movement, not as famous as the El Primero. It's ultra thin um, and generally doesn't have a chronograph complication. Since it's not an El Primero, you can actually pick these up for like two to three thousand dollars, and you have an ultra thin automatic in house movement from Zenith. What's in there not to like? Now, of course, you have to like the design of the Zenith Elite Classic, but I certainly do. And while, you know, yeah, I could find it a little boring here, there for the money, it's really hard to beat. I mean, we're talking Longines money for an in house Zenith. The Wrist Index. Hey, Fed, how do you avoid buying hype watches in a world that is so good at marketing them? Now, this is a little tough for me to answer, particularly because I have so much experience in the watch industry, so maybe I'm predisposed to cutting out the bullshit, but essentially, I focus on what I like. I don't necessarily care what's popular. I don't care that Brad Pitt is wearing something. If he's wearing something I like and maybe brings attention to me because of it, I mean, that's one thing, but just because a celebrity's wearing it or because, you know, some YouTube channel is running around shouting Mazal with, you know, random people selling Rolexes, I mean, I buy what I like. I, I'm not a, I don't believe in herd mentality. If you're spending two, three thousand, five thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, you should be buying something you appreciate not buying something at like the mall to fit in just for a status symbol. Um, I also am predisposed to hating anything that's inflated in price. I mean, I'm a watch dealer. I love a good deal. So automatically, if something is like above retail, I'll very rarely be interested in it. But mainly, I like to buy what's a good value and what I like and what everybody else likes be damned as far as I'm concerned. Then last but not least, SC Cortez. What's the best FU watch out there? Trying to decide what to get when I win the lottery. So don't go Richard Meal, because you'll look like you have zero taste. Um, if I was you, I would get any of the Patek Philippe complication pieces. The ones you have to fill out an application um, to buy. Now, that doesn't mean they'll sell you one. You need a few Pateks before that. But, you know, any chiming Patek watch or a Rotropont Patek watch, that's an FU watch. And maybe not everybody knows what it is, but the people that do know what it is know that you are a master of the universe. It's as simple as that. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And, of course, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.